the two or three slides we're going to show, Alex, to just kick off. Um, I'm, what I'd like to do is just uh, first say a warm welcome to everyone. Uh, welcome. Uh, nice to see you. Thanks for those who are showing their faces. It's nice to see faces, Laura, uh, Serena, and Chris, uh, as well as Paul, Monica, Davenport Office, and Davenport Office. <laughs> and then Jeannie, who I'll introduce in a moment. Uh, but um, I just want to let people know that we are recording this town hall. We're doing that because uh, we're hoping to use the Q's and A's. And basically, for those who weren't able to join us tonight, we're hoping to be able to, uh, one, make sure that they get the Q's and A's so that they benefit from the conversation we've had this evening. Uh, and then we're probably going to take a photo at some point. And Monica is the person who's uh, on task to be, to, to be doing that. So just want to let you know that. And uh, what I'd also like to do is, while this is Zoom and it's all virtual, I am physically located in Toronto. So I'd like to start off with a land acknowledgement uh, for Toronto. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabeg, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, uh, to many diverse First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Uh, so with that, uh, I am uh, going to actually not only warmly welcome all of you, but especially our special guest, uh, Jeannie uh, Cheng, uh, who's uh, uh, joining us from uh, far away Markham. Is that where you live, Jeannie? <laughs> uh, so, and I'll just say a few things. Uh, Jeannie is, um, she's part of a company called uh, MNP. She's the regional tax leader and a partner and business advisor in the firm's tax advisory group. Uh, she provides comprehensive corporate and personal tax services to lots of clients. She has over two decades of experience, so she's got lots of experience and lots of wisdom. Um, she uh, writes in various uh, tax publications, um, and she's a professional chartered accountant. Um, earning her Master's of Accounting at the University of Waterloo, which is almost as good a school as McGill University, which is where I went to. But, you know, no competition, Jeannie. You know, we, we will do an arm wrestle when I next see you physically. So I think I'm just going to say thanks to you, uh, particularly for uh, joining us this evening. I know it's tax season, so you're really busy. Um, and so it, it, means, uh, um, it means a lot that you've made an extra effort. So just to everyone, in terms of agenda, we're just going to show two or three slides just to go through a couple of things. And then we're literally going to just delve right into questions. Um, and uh, for those that submitted questions in advance, thanks so much. Um, and what was going to happen is I think um, um, Alex is just, uh, I'm hoping that you guys uh, who, has question, who have questions can sort of ask it yourselves. Um, and if not, we could sort of uh, do that ourselves. And Alex will be leading the charge on the question. So Alex, do you want to take us to the first slide? Okay, just gonna get up my screen. Okay, can you guys see it now? Yes, it's Excellent. perfect. Thanks, thanks so much, Alex. So I think, look, uh, you could actually have started filing your taxes on February 22nd, which was uh, earlier this week on Monday, uh, but, uh, and the, uh, but the deadline actually for, uh, for filing and payment due is April 30th. So we're, while we extended the deadline last year because it was a special year and it's an unprecedented pandemic year, um, uh, we are going back to the original deadline of April the 30th. Uh, now, those who are self-employed, uh, the deadline is uh, June the 15th, and uh, the deadline for contributing to an RRSP is March the 1st. So any of you that might have money left, uh, well, you still have a couple of days left to be able to do so. Th that's until this Monday. So I just want to sort of go through that. Uh, let's go to the uh, next slide, please. Um, so tax filing tips, I think we'll probably get some more wise uh, tax filing tips, uh, tips from uh, Jeannie, but um, you know, just recommending people to file on time. Uh, if for some reason, for the few people that might actually have a payment OE, which I don't expect that to be many, you can make arrangements with CRA if you're not able to pay right away. And we'll go through a telephone number in a minute. And then uh, everybody's encouraged to use CRA digital services 
Uh, and we do have on the next slide, which uh, Alice is going to go to, I think we have, oh no, oh, we don't have the email address for the, uh, the where people go to file their taxes. Is it in the slide afterwards? Maybe it's my fault that I kind of missed that. No, but that's okay. So maybe what we'll do is if you do not know how to file your taxes online, <laughs> go to the CRA account. I'm sure it says file your taxes here. Uh, but if you need any, uh, if you need any help, here are free tax clinics uh, uh, in, uh, well, three of them actually are in the Davenport Riding and then one's just outside. So Liola Tax Credit, which is um, Liola Rupe, 106 Ramp Rankin, oh, okay. I actually don't know where that is. I know Rankin's in the riding, but I didn't know that that, uh, that they have a free tax zone, which is great. West Neighborhood House, that's um, uh, Duff, no, Ossington and Dundas. And then Vietnamese Duffin Association is close to, um, it's on Dundas near Dufferin. And then you have a Queen one, which is in Parkdale. And that would be just a little bit west of our riding, but um, just, I would say a little bit west of Dufferin and Queen. So lots, and if you need us to send that out, I think Alex is happy, or you could just call my office and we'll make sure to let you know, um, you know, where to uh, access these uh, free services if you do not have time to write down these phone numbers now. Okay, um, and Alex, do we have, um, I think we're good. I think we're now gonna go into the questions and answers. And maybe- I think, uh... Jeannie maybe wanted to. Uh, oh, yes, I was going to well. actually, I was just going to say for before we sort of delve in, I was just going to get Jeannie to maybe sort of talk just for maybe a couple of minutes just to say what might be a little bit different, what might uh, constituents want to uh, be aware of or alert to um, before we get started on Q's and A's. Yeah, no, that sounds great. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say that that was a really great um, summary and you took away some of the initial points that I wanted to make, but that's fantastic. Um, yeah, everyone's always asking about deadlines. So, so that's a big one for sure. Um, this year we, we do have, um, unfortunately, I don't believe there's any extensions or they haven't been announced yet. And, and um, you know, I think that hopefully people have gotten a little bit used to um, you know, if you're working from home or, or, and, you know, it's hard for you to get out there and see your accountant or see other, um, you know, someone to help you file your tax return. So, um, you know, it's possible that they may still announce an extension, even though that's the deadlines a couple months away. Um, I haven't heard anything to that effect. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, if you do have the information though, I'd encourage you to file earlier rather than later. You know, there really isn't any, um, drawback to doing that or negative to filing early because really what you would get is if you're getting a refund, hopefully you'll get the refund as soon as possible. And if you do have to pay, you really don't have to actually pay until April the 30th. So in either case, it doesn't really hurt to file earlier. Um, I just wanted to, we got a lot of questions and I took a look through some of the list of the questions in advance. And uh, we got a lot of questions around the home office expense. So I just wanted to do a little quick summary about some of the new rules relating to the home office expenses, um, just because I know a lot of, that might answer some of the questions that have already been sent out. But nonetheless, I'm happy to go through each question as well when we get there. So um, there's, the CRA has posted um, some guidance on two new methods for 2020 relating to claiming home office expenses. And they're called, the first one's called the temporary flat rate method. And the second one's called the simplified detailed method. And this is on the CRA website. And we're happy to kind of send out a link to you guys afterwards if you want to read about it um, uh, in your own time afterwards. But I can give you a quick rundown of what these two methods entail. So the first one and the more simple method, which is the temporary flat rate method, is if you had to work from home and that was as a result of you know COVID-19 and the pandemic and if you worked from home for more than 50 percent of the time for a period of at least four consecutive weeks during 2020 then you would qualify to use this method and that you would also be only claiming home office expenses and not other employment expenses um, and finally you know the, the last criteria is that your employer did not reimburse you for your home office expenses. So as long as you meet those criteria, you can use the temporary flat rate method. The really good thing about the temporary flat rate method is you don't actually need um, receipts to support the claim. It's a flat rate, it's $2 a day for each day that you worked from home in 2020, um, up to a maximum of $400. Um, your employer doesn't have to sign anything 
uh, doesn't have to give you anything. So um, it seems to me the most likely scenarios if you claim this and you did have to work at home as a result of the pandemic, that really you would, um, the CRA wouldn't be coming back to ask you for, for documentation or really to question you very much at all. So, so I think that's the safest route to go. Um, especially if you don't want to kind of track everything and and um, worry about the CRA contacting you afterwards or auditing you as a result of this of this claim that you're going to be making. And it's $400. It's not a huge amount of money in terms of a tax deduction, but I think it still goes a little bit of a ways to help you save a little bit of tax um, for 2020. So that's the, the sort of simpler method. Um, the slightly more complicated method is going to be the um, called the simplified detailed method. And that's where you have additional receipts and invoices that you wanna claim because you, you spent more than the $400 that you would otherwise be able to claim. Um, so it's where you still have to meet certain criteria where your workspace is mainly, which is more than 50% um, used for your work. And you would have to have worked at home for at least four weeks as well. And your expenses are used directly in your work. So you would need to um, do a little bit more. You'd have to have a completed form called a T2200. This year, the CRA released um, a more simplified version of this form. It was called a T2200S. Um, this form doesn't ask as many questions. Usually the form that you have your employer has to fill out in order for you to claim employment expenses is, is much longer. It's a two page questionnaire in the past, but this one is just one page. And it just asks like a couple of very simple questions. So your employer shouldn't have any issue with signing that and giving that to you so that you can claim these expenses. Your employer would only have to attest to the fact that you worked from home as a result of the pandemic. So that's essentially all they would have to say. So that's fairly straightforward, but then you would then need to make sure you have your receipts and invoices and you would be able to claim those as a result of um, working from home. So, sorry, Julie, did you have a question? I do. I was just going to, just because, um, Jeannie, you are like a star and you're used to explaining this like a million times, but I just want to go through the basics one more time, if that's okay. So there's two separate, there's two different ways. It's either the temporary flat rate or the simplified detailed method. And I love how the simplified detailed method is actually complicated. <laughs> exactly. But they exactly. call it simplified detailed method, but that's okay. So let's just go through the first one, it, the temporary flat rate. So you said, is it 50% of your home has to be used at your as your home office? Is that what you said? Um, no, no, no. So it just has to be that 50% of the time you worked yeah. from home, yeah. like you worked from home more than 50% of the, so four consecutive weeks, you have to work for four consecutive weeks for more than 50% of the time from home. So, so like, if, so right. in a given week, I have to work at, for four weeks, I have to have worked uh, two and a half days uh, for each of, that's what you're saying, two and a half days per week uh, for four consecutive weeks, at least. But it could be more, uh, but that's more. Right. I okay. think for many people, um, especially like early on, maybe back in March and April, or, or like, you know, even throughout the pandemic, you know, you might have had to work possibly all of the time from home or, you know, maybe 80% of the time. So you would definitely, most people, I think, would be able to meet that criteria. Um, I think there's obviously some people who, you know, they do have to go into the office or have to go into wherever it is their place of work um, because, you know, they don't have a choice in that matter. So, so then that may not be available to you if that's the case. But, um, you know, I think it would apply to, to a lot of people out there. So that would be a good thing. Okay. So you, and you do, for the uh, te uh, temporary flat rate, you, employer doesn't need to reimburse, uh, employer has not reimbursed and you don't need receipts. And it's two dollars a day up to maximum four hundred. Okay, so I think we got that. Then the simplified detailed method. So can I, so if someone say they bought a new chair because they didn't have a chair that was comfortable and like that, and then they bought a new desk, and then they bought so many more printer cartridges because they were printing a lot more because they weren't going into the office and that's what they needed to do. Is there actually a list of qualified sort of? Um, things that you can claim for your home office somewhere, or is it just anything that's kind of realistic? And I'm just assuming that would be for the simplified detailed method versus, because you've just got so much more expenses. Right, yeah, no, those are good questions. Um, I think that 
there, there is a list, like the CRA does have a list on their website, which we can also um, link to um, afterwards and send out to all of you. Um, they do have some examples of things that you can or can't claim. Um, I think that, you know, when it comes to like really large purchases or like a desk or, or a chair, potentially the CRA might argue that this is sort of like a capital expense because you would need to, like, that's what you normally do in a business. But, you know, I mean, if it's a reasonable, it's not too expensive, it's not over the top. I don't think there would be any issue with claiming it. I think it's, you know, very common for people to have to improve their workspace so that they can work at home. I think that's very, very normal. Um, uh, there is a bunch of things about like, for example, if, because it's your home that you're working in, that you would be claiming a portion of your electricity, or if you pay rent, you would be writing, like taking a portion of that. And if you only use one room in your house out of like, maybe you have three rooms, for example, then maybe you would take a proration based on the space that you're using um, for your electricity and your heating. Um, things like, you know, minor repairs that you'd have to make to your home, you can even include that as well. Um, you can use, you can write off your phone if you're using your phone exclusively for employment. Um, and this is new, it didn't used to be included in there, but you can now actually also deduct your monthly internet service. So that didn't used to be on the list and now that is for 2020. So that's new this year. Okay, because that is, because uh, I think there's also something that I've done this in the past and this is years ago. Uh, where I did have to work from home for a while when I was a bit of a consultant, they did take like a percentage of my space and I think they were able to write it off. Why am I thinking like my mortgage interest or something like that? Does that sound right? Or yeah. Yeah, that does sound right. Yeah. Is that still possible now? Or you have to, use, like, can I do both? Or can I use a simplified detailed method and then also use that? Or you can only use one method? to actually claim your office space working from home? I think you can't use both. Like if you're gonna claim actual costs, such as the ones that we've been talking about, then you would have to move to the simplified detailed method, which like you said, isn't that simple, um, as opposed to doing the flat rate method. I think the flat rate method is more for those individuals who, you know, they really don't want the hassle of looking through receipts or trying to figure out, you know, how they're gonna determine these numbers. Um, or someone who might be worried that the CRA could come back and ask for things and that that would be a hassle they really don't want to deal with. So that's, uh, that's the person that, you know, might want to go the route of claiming um, the temporary flat rate method. But, you know, a lot of, in a lot of cases, people will have more than $400 of expenses that they'd want to deduct. Um, and as long as, you know, you're not um, opposed to kind of doing a little bit of work on that end to gather, you know, gather those receipts, make sure you've got the support, um, because unfortunately the CRA can ask to see that and you'd have to be able to provide it to them so that they, they can kind of approve that claim. So you'd want to make sure you can do that. But yes, yes, the, the um, mortgage, there's certain things in the CRA has a website which kind of lays out all of that criteria for you as to what you can or can't claim. Um, uh, for salaried employees, though, I believe normally mortgage interest is not deductible as part of one of their deductions um, on the CRA's website. So just something to note. But if, you're, also getting, if, you're, getting, if you're getting emergency supports, you can. Sorry, there's, is there? I was just saying if you, if, but you said salary employees couldn't, but if you're getting emergency supports, can you? Oh, if you were getting emergency supports, you mean like serve and, and that yeah. sort of thing? Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, normally you're claiming serve because um, you weren't able to work or were only able to maybe earn very little income as a result of that. So I think you'd have to look at whether you'd qualify, like it depends on um, maybe the amount of time that you were working versus not working. So that might be a factor when you're kind of looking at what expenses you can or can't claim. So again, maybe it's just to think about it, it's just to be reasonable in terms of what you claim. Like if you, let's say for, for unfortunately, like you weren't able to work for half the year because of, of COVID, of the pandemic, then um, it probably would be reasonable that you could only claim those expenses for the portion of the year that you're working from home, right? So I think that would be reasonable as opposed to claiming, you know, the entire year or something like that. 
So. Okay. So Jeannie, I forgot to mention to anyone who has a question, I know you guys are all Zoom masters now and know how to use the raise your hand function. So if you can use your raise your hand function, please, and let us know. I think we already have the first question from someone and Alex is going to tell us who the first question is coming from. So uh, I, I think we, we had a, a questions from a, a few folks on the, the work from home um, uh, benefit, and I, I see that we've sort of spent a lot of uh, time on it now. So I, I think I'll just open the floor first before we go to anyone else. Is, does anyone have any follow-up questions about the uh, work from home credit? I, I know we had uh, questions from uh, Arjun and uh, Maria Costa. Um, if you would prefer me to read uh, your question out too, that's that's fine as well. But uh, does anyone have uh, follow-up questions on that? I think Arjun has uh, raised his hand. So how about if we go to Arjun? Because I, I did see that he had written before. So Arjun, I think someone's going to mute you. I don't know who. Although you disappeared from my view. Hi there. Thank you so much for your uh, leadership in the community and for hosting this webinar today. Uh, just a question on the um, capital expense. And I think you touched on this briefly. If from working for home, we've had to, you know, upgrade our computer equipment, have had slightly larger expenses. Um, I understand maybe not all of that uh, could be deductible in one year. Is there an opportunity maybe to um, space out that deduction over several years just to get the maximum tax benefit from that? Okay, um, good question. Um, I was just sort of um, confirming about the furniture because I know that's always been sort of um, this year as much as any other, it would be a very different year in that normally maybe you wouldn't be buying a brand new chair or a new computer for your home office. Um, this year, everyone, like lots of people are doing that because everyone's working from home for an extended period of time. Um, the series website does set out that furniture doesn't qualify as an expense that you can actually deduct. So, um, you know, I think that Unfortunately, you know, certain certain more capital type expenditures, the CRA would not be looking to allow you to make that deduction. So I think we just need to kind of confirm, like if you have an item, maybe just double check that, um, you know, like for sure, I know like your home office type expenses, like the, the um, like I mentioned, the electricity, heat, water, utilities, and then now the home internet access fees, those are deductible, some minor repairs. So I think the CRA is more looking at things that are deductible from a, um, from an income perspective to say if that's that's not a capital item, then it is deductible. So I'm with you there on the computer though. I think it's perfectly reasonable to want to like to, to take that deduction, but I'm not sure the CRA would accept it. And, and I think we just need to be careful about taking those kinds of deductions. Um, the, there is the, the temporary flat rate method, but it's only $400. So that wouldn't ne necessarily begin to cover the cost of what a new computer might cost. So you can certainly take that without having to account for any of your receipts. So just that's one thing to keep in mind. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, because Arjun was asking not on computer, but over a few years as well. But I think you've answered that question. Okay, Laura, you've you've gone off the list, but uh, you will bring you back on if you have one after Nick. So Nick F. What's your question? Hi everybody. Uh, hi Laura. Uh, nice to see you. Um, <laughs> Um, my question is, the, I, I have a Canada Council grant um, that I wasn't able to um, uh, execute because of the global pandemic, COVID-19, and, um, and I, um, I want to know if the CRA will commit to deferring it. I mean, I've deferred it, I've deferred grants before when I haven't had the chance to spend them until, you know, I claim the income in the in the year that I'm able to spend it, but uh, it's always sort of up in the air whether the CRA will accept that um, until after I've done submitted my taxes. So, seeing as there were many many travel and gathering related projects that weren't able to be executed this year, do you know if the CRA has a plan to sort of blanket say yes, it's okay, everyone can defer that income? Um, okay. Good, good question. Um, maybe just to kind of confirm your situation. So you're saying, did you receive the grant, but then you haven't been able to use it? Is that what you're saying? Or did you not receive the grant yet? I did receive the grant and uh, I still have the money. I just haven't been able to spend it. So the, the, the question is, because if, if I'm not able to defer it, 
and they say, right. no, actually you had $20,000 of income this year, then I'll have to pay back all my CR CERB and CRB, which um, I'm not, um, well, I can't do that and complete my project for the Canada Council. I mean, I just- that Right, won't. right, no, I understand your point. Um, I would have to double check on what this kind of grant is, is specifically for, um, but there is, I think there's the ability to apply, like for tax purposes, you can apply a grant to expenses against expenses that you incur. So usually that's expenses incurred in this year or in the following year. Um, and if that's the case, um, then perhaps you could defer it until like if you spend it, you received it in 2020, and then you have expenses that you will incur in 2021 that would go against that grant. It's, it's, I, think, I think it could be possible that that grant could be deferred until the following year. Um, the only caution I would say about that is that I think that you do get issued a T4A um, at the end of the year for that grant. So in that case, normally, like the CRA can match up certain things to say, okay, like, did you report the income because a slip was issued to you? And so maybe they would expect to see it. So if they do ask you that question, like, like probably my best advice to you would, you know, you should probably... Um, speak to somebody briefly about that to make sure that you know what the tax treatment is just because for grants, they can have um, potentially different tax treatment. Um, and my guess is that maybe in your case, you can apply it against expenses, but um, in expenses either this year or the following year, but we want to double check that for you before concluding there. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, Alex, who do we have next in terms of VI? From uh, Laura. Okay, Laura, over to you. My question was already answered, so I'm good to go. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, so you're still thorough, <laughs> I think uh, we had a question from uh, David Ayer, but if you want to speak up, David, or I can read yours. Who do we have? David, do you want, uh, do you have the question, uh, Alex? Uh, yes, I do, and, and uh, I'm happy to read it out. So. Um, I guess we'll, we'll just put a bow on the, on the work from home. Uh, could uh, Jeannie just uh, restate the things you can claim under the simplified detailed option? Okay, yes. Okay, so in the simplified detailed option, um, you can claim your portion, the, the portion of electricity, heat, water, and utilities um, that and rent that relate to the space that your home office occupies as a percentage of your total home. That's normally how it would be calculated. You can also claim home internet access fees, like um, whatever you pay on a monthly basis for your internet. If you have a phone that you use for your business, you can claim that. Um, if you have some minor repairs relating to the space where you work in, you can claim that as well. So those are the main things that are listed on the CRA website. Um, and what we can do afterwards is include a link to um, a couple of, you know, CRA websites that kind of set out the type of expenses that they would normally expect to see that are being deducted by an employee. Um, I think one of the questions I might have seen in the chat as well relate to um, self-employed versus employed. So most of what I've been talking about primarily relates to employees. Um, if you're an employee and you get a T4, then these are the kinds of things you would normally be able to deduct. Um, if you're self-employed though, I just wanted to emphasize that that, that is a little bit different because self-employed is someone who runs their own business and someone who runs their own businesses is normally able to take more deductions than an employee. And the rationale there is because, um, you know, a business owner takes on more risk to start the business and they would incur more business expenses that would be applied against that business income. So um, it is a bit more broad as to what someone who is self-employed can deduct versus someone who's an employee of a company. Okay, who's got the next question? Um, so I, we had a, a few questions on um, CERB and the emergency benefits like EI. So I know we had one from uh, Serena. Uh, can we go to you next, Serena? Hi, thank you. Um, so I am a bartender, um, so I've been out of work for most of the past year. So living off of CERB and EI, as well as uh, quite a few of my friends, 
and we've all just generally been kind of confused about how we should file this year and how it's different uh, from previous years. Okay, good question. Um, you are going to get a slip if you haven't received one already from the CRA. Um, it's a T4A and the T4A will set out the amount of the CERB or um, CRB that you received this year. And that is taxable. So there's no been no tax withheld on that. Normally, like if you um, receive income from your employer, they would withhold taxes as a result of that. But in this case, the CRA was saying that they wanted to get the money to everyone right away. So they didn't withhold any taxes from it. So that does mean, however, that come April 30th, once you file your return, or, or even if you file it earlier, but you don't have to pay it by till April 30th, that you would then have perhaps a slightly larger tax bill than you might be used to. Although it still depends on where your income levels are. Like if your income still isn't um, that high, for example, then your, your tax rate shouldn't be, you know, too, too large. Um, and therefore, you know, hopefully your tax bill isn't, isn't too bad. Um, it might be worth it for you to start to do, like maybe to do a little return right now or to get started on that if you have your slips, um, just so that you have a sense of how much tax you might owe. Because, um, you, you know, if it's, you have until April 30th to pay, but if you owe a little bit more tax than you otherwise thought you might, then it might take you some time to figure out, you know, how am I going to pay this or, you know, make, make sure that you save enough over the next month or two so that you can pay that tax bill. So that's just something to think about. Uh, that's a good question, Serena, because I think a lot of people are thinking that, well, my life was different last year. So how the, how the heck has uh, filing taxes uh, changed this year? So I think you asked one of the critical questions for sure. Uh, Mr. Davenport office, Alex Keys. who else do, do we have on the question we list? Had a, a question in the chat there from uh, Cora, and I know you submitted one before as well. Cora, uh, would you want to um, unmute and, and ask your, your questions? If not, I can read. I think Cora is like the silent type, the strong <laughs> silent type, so you might have to ask Alex. Okay, so uh, the first question is, uh, we both work at home, two persons, can we both claim separate expenses? Yep, no, good question. Um, yeah, absolutely. You can claim separate expenses. So you're both working at home as a result of the pandemic. That would have to be the requirement and that you worked for the four consecutive weeks. Um, at least 50% of your time was working at home. So if you meet the criteria that set out to claim that, then each of you can both claim separate expenses. And like, I don't know what your workspace looks like. Um, it's possible that, you know, maybe you have your own, hopefully you have your own workspace and each of you, let's say maybe you work in a different room or you work in a different part of the room. So then um, when we're looking at things like deducting, let's say um, your portion of rent, because normally what they would say is they would deduct a percentage of the rent um, based on the space where you're working as compared to your entire home that you might use for other purposes, then um, you would have a larger space um, between the two of you, obviously, that you could deduct those expenses. So both of you could do that. Again, you always have the option of doing the temporary flat rate method for each of you. So each of you could claim the $400 without worrying about tallying up all the various expenses and that sort of thing. But um, you know, if, if it's more advantageous to you to claim all these separate expenses and write those off, and in most cases, it probably is more advantageous to do that, then, um, then you can both claim it, definitely. And can I just ask a question on the four, the $400 is the maximum for the whole year, right? So it's not like, oh, well, I had, you know, three, four consecutive weeks where I spent more than 50% each of those weeks at home. You're basically saying, Julie, it's a maximum for a whole year, that $400. And I'm assuming that that $400 is, so say I earned $20,000, then it basically would be 20,000 minus the 400, it would be taken off my overall sort of income before they apply the taxes, right? So can you yes, compare those items? Yeah, no, that's a good question. I think they're kind of, and I don't know how they pulled that number out of the air, but they're, they were thinking, oh, if it's $2 a day, then they just use 200 days for the year. Like they were gonna say that was kind of the maximum. And it's a little bit arbitrary how they came up with that, I think, but, um, you know, it's just to, to come up with a number that would be reasonable that people could still get some benefit out of. Although at the end of the day, you know, if your tax rate isn't that high to begin with, then the $400 maybe isn't going to take you too far. Um, but yes, it does come off, it does come off the, um, the income. 
So you would, it, it does show on the tax return, it will show the income on one line, and then it will show in a separate part of the tax return that, that you can deduct the $400 or whatever other expenses that you would have, but the tax would be calculated on like the net of, of the income minus the expense. So. Can, I, can I just say, uh, Jeannie, thank God you exist because uh, while I was a top st uh, accounting <laughs> student in high school, all I thought was, uh, you know, there's a lot of details involved in this accounting stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> thank God you love this stuff. Thank God you know this stuff and really grateful that you're here. So that's very helpful, all your answers. Um, I know that Dashboard Office, Mr. Alex Keys, has put out another call out for any other super duper intelligent questions. Yeah, and I, I don't see any raised hands right now. In the meantime, I, I will um, ask a uh, question that was uh, submitted by, by somebody else in advance. Um, and uh, uh, do feel free to uh, speak up if, uh, if I haven't uh, understood it, but maybe uh, Jeannie, you've heard of, uh, of this. The, the question was just, is there a recent tax credit for laid off workers? Um, no, that's a good question. I don't, I'm not aware that there is. However, there's a number of different credits that, you know, that, that can be taken advantage of. Obviously, if you have, um, you know, any medical receipts over a certain amount, you can claim those and donations. Um, I'm trying to think about whether there was anything special for someone who's been laid off. I don't believe that there has. I, I will sort of canvas my, um, um, my database of, of different items, but um, I don't think that one's there. But if someone has been laid off, though, they should be eligible for a number of things. So one of them would be they could, they could have applied for EI, um, but once the CERB was available, they hopefully could have applied for that as well. So that hopefully that's something they were available to them. Um, I believe the CRB, which kicked in after the CERB program ended, is still available. So if somebody is laid off um, during that period, they can claim that. Um, and so there would be a number of these other programs that hopefully would be available to this individual so that they could um, take advantage of some of the, the COVID funding that, that is out there. Um, and um, you know, for, for anyone who is um, self-employed and has lost their business as well, there's a number of different, some of them are loan programs like um, CBA, Canada Emergency Bank Account. So that's available um, to certain businesses, including self-employed individuals who um, have a CRA business number. So, so there's a lot of stuff out there now, like, like there are certain specific circumstances where someone who unfortunately is impacted by the pandemic, um, but they still are, may not be eligible for one of these programs. So there's always going to unfortunately be those kinds of situations. But I think if they kind of run through some of the funding and see if any of that is available to them, that probably would be um, a, a, of great advantage to them, I think. So, uh, so uh, building off that, someone had also asked, and, and I think this uh, would be something a lot of people would wonder, um, what's the best one-stop source for, for all the special rules and, and types of payments in place this year? Oh, goodness, that's a good question. It's really, really hard to find a one-stop shop for that, I think. Um, you know, I, I, I was, we were really hoping that the CRA would do a really good sort of summary of a lot of these items. And I think to some degree, like some of the programs um, there is a good discussion about them on the CRA website. So for example, if you're really looking for information about the home office expenses, um, like they, they have laid it out in such a way that I think is pretty readable. They do have a lot of FAQs on their website. So that would, might be one place to start. Um, there's other places like if you, if you, for example, if you're a business owner, I encourage you to read um, like the CPA Canada blog is really good. It actually covers a lot of the various types of fundings that are available, some of it to individuals, some of it to businesses. So, so that blog is really good. Um, I'm going to do a little plug here. MMP has um, a great website as well. And we have a bunch of information available about different kinds of, you know, COVID and pandemic related funding, um, as well as that sort of thing. So it just really depends on, you know, what your profile is and, and what sort of information you're looking for but it, it can be challenging. There's a lot of information out there. It's information overload, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily always fit what you're looking for either. So it can be challenging, but you know, any of you feel free to reach out to me if you have questions, I'd be happy to point you in the right direction as to where you might wanna look for some of this info. Yeah, and Alex, maybe what we could do is a little bit of a cheat sheet to say, you know, if you're looking for a good Q&A, here's a couple of sites to go to. If you're looking for what you can claim under this, 
you know, work from home sort of credit, you know, where to go to simplify whether you're using the uh, 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 temporary flat rate or method or whether you're using the simplified detailed uh, method. Uh, so I, I think that we could probably uh, send out a little bit of a cheat sheet as well. Okay, what's next on our, uh, on some of the submitted questions, Alex, just because it, it'll be helpful, just because I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, I think we'll, we'll do that. So we, um, we did mention at the top that the deadline to file taxes is the same again this year, but someone has asked, um, will there be interest-free deadline extensions? Um, and, and I think uh, to do with um, owing uh, to, the, to the CRA, is there, has there been any relief on that? I think that's more a question for me, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it can be for both of you. <laughs> that's a good question that we might want to bring back to, um, you know, like like to the to various government organizations to say, you know, this is something that maybe we should, you know, we should be thinking about because um, people are still in the midst of the pandemic. It's hard for people to, um, you know, pay their bills. A lot of people may maybe have struggling or, you know, not employed right now. So I think that last year they did offer that extension um, and it would really be really great if they offered it again. I'm not aware that the there's any extension for payment right now that, that the CRA has announced. Um, I think that would be very, very helpful. And you know, even an extension for some of these filing deadlines, like I think people are still confused about, you know, how they're gonna go out and get this done, or, you know, if, you, you know, there might be other obstacles, like people are still worried and would rather maybe not, you know, leave their home and that sort of thing, right? So, you know, I think that it, there is very much justification for, for an extension from the CRA, whether it's payment or filing deadline. So Jeannie, actually, while well, Alex is looking for the next question, what percentage of Canadians now file taxes online versus, uh, sorry, what percentage of Canadians file their own taxes versus um, sort of going uh, out to get some help? Is it 50%? Is it 80%? You know? I don't know. I think it's pretty high, though. I would say that, um, like I don't have those statistics in front of me. I'm sure they're out there somewhere. Um, but I would say that you know, I think a lot of people are, you know, more and more so it's easier than ever to like, I guess, like go on a website, whether it's like, there's a lot of free software as well. I comes a couple of questions I, I noticed on the list. Um, we're asking about uh, how to file your taxes for free. There, There's lots of free tax software out there and, and oftentimes they're actually quite good. They'll kind of go through a question and answer process to help you, um, you know, just sort of like a conversational style where it's not necessarily complicated in terms of going through forms that you may not understand. Um, so, so there's that, but I, I don't know what the percentage is. I think that um, a lot of people are filing them at home and the software that's out there is better than it's ever been. It's, it's easier to navigate than it has been in the past and it's allowing people to file their own taxes, but it's still a daunting process. It's still not it's still not easy. It can be very challenging um, and people feel stressed about it. I completely understand that. And this is what I do. So, um, you know, so I feel good about that because I help people take that stress away. So. <laughs> and, and maybe just Alex, just for our list to, to sort of, I do think it's good for us to maybe get some of those links to the free uh, tax uh, where or, or tax sites where people can sort of, uh, whether download or use to be able to file their taxes. Yeah, we, we can definitely uh, share that. And uh, we'll also share those those free tax clinics out uh, again as well. I did want to uh, quickly say, since uh, Sierra had, had sent us um, something and it was announced in, in February, so so uh, may not have uh, come through to uh, Jeannie yet, but there there is um, some uh, uh, targeted interest relief to uh, people who are facing tax debt for, for 2020. Uh, you won't have to repay interest on, on that debt until 2022. Um, we can uh, share that after. Um, we did have a question from, um, from a, a sole proprietor. I don't know if we, we have her on, but um, I know there are some, some small businesses that had that question. So uh, do you have any uh, best practices and tips for filing as a first-time sole proprietor? Okay, good question. Um, you know, I think that the key is just to, to organize your information before you start. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, there's like 
it, there's a box of maybe like receipts that you've stored up and things like that. I think if you can kind of, you know, keep yourself like through, like ideally throughout the year um, to organize things in such a way that it's easy for you to manage when you kind of look at everything. Um, like if you do that, then it'll make it easier for you come tax time, as opposed to, you know, kind of having to panic and there's like all sorts of information everywhere. Um, I would say as well, I mean, it depends on how complex your business is. If it if it is more complicated, um, you know, I think it never hurts to just even reach out to accountant. And um, even if you know you don't necessarily you want it, you'd rather do it yourself. But if if that's the case, you can still get some good tips and in, in maybe even some templates or something like that that they can send to you that you can use to help organize your information. Um, so a little bit of help sometimes goes a really long way. Um, I would say as well that. Um, there's, there's a lot of good um, forums and webinars and things like that out there, even in terms of understanding what kind of tax deductions you can claim, um, you know, how you should be filing your taxes and, and that sort of thing, because there's different kinds of tax treatment for different things. For example, we talked about, you know, capital items already, you know, what would you want to, like, what should you capitalize and how can you take the depreciation on those items and that sort of thing. So it can be a a big daunting process. It never hurts to get a little bit of help or even just to attend a few, um, you know, webinars or, or, or like, you know, some sort of free clinics, that sort of thing that, that other accountants might be putting on um, just to get a, an understanding of how you should be doing that. So. Okay. Maybe we could go to one, uh, maybe one or two final questions, Alex, before we uh, sign off. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I know we had a, a question from um, Bruce about um, TFSAs. Did you want to uh, read that out, uh, Bruce? Or you yeah, Bruce. How about if we? So it's just not uh, Davenport office and me talking all the time. I I actually um, I forgot my question. I have another one, but if if you remember what I wrote, um, <laughs> go to your question. You got your question is Bruce. Go ahead. Okay, so. Um, I was a landlord and we had a tenant who was paying us rent uh, through direct deposit. And um, when I fill out my taxes, do I need to um, find every direct deposit and print that out? Or can I just, you know, say that, well, that's what he paid and then we'll just leave it on spec? Okay, good question. You don't have to, you don't have to necessarily provide anything when you file your tax return. So if you've organized your information and your confidence, the right number, you would just make sure you keep those. Like if you have all the backup and the records, you know, it's in your bank statement, for example, already, right? So you, you don't necessarily need to extract that. Um, I don't know how you're planning to file your taxes. If you're planning to file it like with some kind of software or electronically, then you wouldn't have to submit any supporting documents to the government if they do come back and ask you then that's the time that I guess you have to provide some information to them. So at that point in time, then you would have to figure out based on what they're asking you, what you'd need to provide to them. So there's no need to necessarily do any of that, but you know, it's, sometimes it's nice to maybe do some spot checks and then just say, oh, hey, you know, if this is like, if the revenue this year was whatever it was, let's just round it up $10,000 or something, then, yeah. you know, if you need up of 10 payments of $10,000 of $1,000 each, then you might want to check to see that that looks right in your records, so. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks. Let's ask one more question, Alex, and then let's uh, say thank yous and allow everybody to eat their dinners and have a glass of wine. <laughs> okay. I think the, the last question is um, uh, one that uh, applies probably to a few people. If, if uh, the submission was pretty specific, specific, but the general question is, if I made a mistake on my taxes going back a few years, um, what's what's the process to to kind of amend that? Okay, yeah, no, great question. Um, the amendment process, or the like, actually they call them T one adjustments. Um, it, it's not too too bad um, in this case. There's actually a form. It's called a T one adjustment form. You just need to fill that out. So, and then you would just kind of detail out what the change is and why you're making it. There's an explanation that you have to provide on that form. Um, you don't necessarily have to reprint the whole tax return or redo the whole thing. Like for example, if you just forgot to include one slip as an example, like you didn't include a T5 slip that you got from the bank, um, then you can just, I think you can attach the slip or you, or you might even be able to, I think you can actually even submit this um, through the CRA My Account. So if you have signed up with the CRA, you can see your information through their website. Um, you can actually submit your adjustment directly 
through the CRA website to them. And they would just take a look at that, you know, match it up, make sure everything's all good. And then they would process that on their end. And if you owe any additional tax or if you have a refund, then that would just be issued back to you. So the process isn't that difficult. Um, there's different ways of doing it. You can send in a paper copy or you can do it electronically through the CRA website. You, I think you can also do it through your tax software if you need to make an adjustment. So there's a number of different ways you can do that. Um, and it shouldn't be a very difficult process. Um, if you did owe some tax though, then there might be some additional interest on that tax that you would have to pay as a result of doing that. Okay, wow. Well, I think I learned a lot more things about taxes than uh, I ever want to know. Uh, just so you know, <laughs> I'm, I've been very blessed uh, that I do have an accountant and uh, and um, I feel very blessed that I get a chance to have someone help me out with mine. So anyways, I just want to say huge thanks to you, uh, Jeannie, for joining us this evening. Uh, it was important uh, uh, to make sure that if there were questions within the Davenport community, that we'd be able to respond to it. Um, you know, we are going to follow up with a bit of a one page sort of cheat sheet with a few Q's and A's and places people can go for, I think, some of the tax advice that you uh, very um, um, uh, uh, wisely sort of recommended to us, as well as uh, areas that there's Q's and A's. And then probably we're also going to do a little bit of a Q&A of what we heard this evening. So huge thanks to you. And I also want to say thanks to everyone for the really great, great questions and for participating. Um, and then uh, thanks to my amazing team who uh, we started very early and we're ending a little bit late today, but uh, really grateful for my amazing team to, you know, putting this together and uh, making sure that we make this, um, you know, tax town hall available to Davenport residents. So with that, um, happy tax filing, everyone. Uh, please keep in touch. My office is here uh, to serve you while we're close to the public during the lockdown. You know, our offices are still open. Just go to my website to find our phone number and email address, and we're happy to respond uh, in a timely fashion to any questions you might have. And I think Monica is going to say something like, can we take a photo? Yes, if uh, everyone is comfortable with it, we'll take a quick photo just to communicate with our um our constituents about this great event so yeah so everybody uh, wants to show themselves it's great and and just give us a three two one and we'll just uh, smile okay one two three there we go thank you great have a great night everyone thank you thanks for having me everyone no thank you bye